Ooh, we are we're back for we another are back. season. We're so excited for our next season here of Live Fly Tying, and we're super excited to have Johnny Ray in the house. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Um, man, just watching Matt do this work stresses me out. <laughs> it's just... It's just crazy. It's been it's, it's been one of those weeks, right? Oh, and we're man. we haven't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Yeah. Right? And uh, you know, we're just we're happy to have you here, Johnny. We have all been tying flies. We've been feverishly tying for our upcoming trip to Cuba on so Friday. So jealous. And um, you know, just watching Matt work his magic here. Uh, welcome everyone. Thanks everyone it's for a lot of buttons in. to push we here. Have, it's like Jam Master J. There's the fly on the wall cam. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see, we got the fly cam, which I'm going to fix here in a second. Ooh, it's a little hot there. I like that. Yes. Should be fun. Should, Should be, be fun. Fantastic. Yeah. So <clears throat> I was driving down here today, and I was like, you know what this reminds me of? And I've been married. I think Melissa's probably not watching, so I won't be quite wrong. But it should be like 12 or 13 years I've been married, so I haven't been on a date that many times. And I felt like I was coming on a date down here like i had to shower i had to clean my nails i had to brush my teeth hey perfect um i was worried about what to wear for background what else was there i'm still sweating you know so it's just like a first date but this is actually our third date this is actually our yes. third date and we really appreciate you yeah. and all the mango fly guys for doing this we love the partnership that we have with you guys oh, it's fun. and it couldn't be better and we do have a great time with this um, and back to the date thing, yeah. you, you know, I have this thing I've been, I've been married a few times and, and, uh, I got this thing. You should always be dating, always oh. be dating your wife. You got to ask her out on a date night, okay. you so know, you, you got to get her cleaned up, you gotcha. know, get cleaned up, gotcha. you know, gotcha. if, dress to impress. Okay. Just pro tip. All right. Pro tip. I like that. We should <laughs> add that to the weekly, like you're not doing relationship this goals. Yeah. But I was trying to think, I was like, with Matt in the podcast, I was going to ask like a random question. Uh -huh. It'd be like, that would be the question that you have to ask like all your guest tires. When was the last time you went on a date? Oh, geez. Right? Last time. Well, it was probably during the summer. Uh -huh. Hit the little brewery down there in Beulah. Right. Got a pretzel and a couple beverages. Ooh. You know? Yeah. Nice. Was that Great Lakes Brewery, I think? Or there Great... are so many new little breweries yeah. out there popping up. That's yeah. a happening little place. Five, Five Lakes, maybe. Yeah, Five Lakes. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, Five so Lakes. They do a good job right there on Crystal Lake. I like the Lake and Brewery. Yeah, that's myself. a good one. Yep. You know, they yep. always have great live music. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not too far from your house, especially. Nope. nope. Not nope. too far from roads. my house. Yeah, get back roads. You make it you safe. Have a couple beers and, yep. and still make it home safely. Yeah. No Ubers no. down there. No, you got to be responsible. Or lifts. No. I don't even know what those are. <laughs> it's actually funny. I haven't been downtown through the whole Christmas thing. I was like looking at the lights and seeing the big old trees. Can you believe the buildings that are going up in downtown Traverse yeah, City? I don't even know. Holy What's the moly. one up by the Buffalo Farm? I have no idea. Yeah. That's like so. crazy. There's something new popping up every week. Yeah. Yeah. We're probably losing viewership by the second because Matt's stressing me out and I don't even know where to go. <laughs> hey, but you know, Johnny, you look good. I think if <laughs> Melissa looks at this, she's going to want to date you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I might have you're, a chance. You're looking good. We'll see. <laughs> Matt, are you happy with the volumes? Or are we all good? Um, I wish John was a little. If I could boost John a little bit here, boost, boost, boost. it. Like um, on a seat or on a volume? No, you're Stand good. Up tall. I just gotta, I gotta hit some more buttons here, and I think we'll get you squared away. I'm scared to touch anything on this uh, mixing board back here. Oh, you're good. You're good. John's sharpening his scissors here. Yep. So. All right. We are so Ominously. excited. So you know, one of the things I love about Johnny's flies. Is they they are, they're they catch fish. They're effective, and they're pretty straightforward yes. and easy to tie. Right? Yep. You and I tie very similarly. Yes. I think Matt was floored the other day at how many flies I whipped off at our bar flies. Oh, He's like, "Holy crap, dude! Like, yeah. I'm like I'm gonna fill my box." Yeah. And I don't spend a whole lot of time on my flies because I want them to be pretty simple and fast because they're either gonna, you know, end up in a tree, right, or end up in a fish's mouth, whatever. They're they're not going to last long once nope. I tie them on. Nope. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I, I do appreciate that the fact that we have, you know, that in common. No. And um, that you can really, you can make fly tying as complicated or, you know, 
as simple as as you as you see it, right? It's it's a tool. It's like cooking. Mm-hmm. You know, you can make a seven course meal or you can make a beautiful three course meal. Mm-hmm. I like to make a little beautiful three course <laughs> meal. Right? I skip the dessert. Yes. It doesn't look like it, but I do. <laughs> but it's the winter time. You gotta well, skip the dessert. It is the winter time. Yeah, I'm not rowing as much. <laughs> Putting on the bulk. So bulk up. Yep. Yeah. All, All right. right. You good? Are I you think ready? we're good. All right. Let's make it work. All right. Well, I think the uh, first fly for me is off a template. Uh, yeah, I'm going to murder the last name, but uh, Dave Pin- Pinchkowski. There you go. So yes. the bad hair day, and we have we the can no say hair it. day. We can't, so. Uh, so. we can't spell it. So Okay. There you go. So um, how I actually fish this fly, it's a small fly for me. So I find a lot of time when I get off the, the trout beat, that a lot of our water for the smallmouth fishing is really low and clear. So I find that if I can get like a little two or three inch bait going, um, this will work better for me. And something I stumbled across across two years ago was a double fly rig for this, which I call the donkey rig. Ooh, the donkey rig. Donkey rig. So if you're sitting there and you're bored with the fly tying, Google up donkey rig. It comes from fluke fishing, and uh, it's basically if you can tandem up to fluke. And a lot of it, if you think about how we tie a lot of our uh, streamers, we always have one chasing. Right. And right. what the donkey rig does is it makes them independent. So they're, it's on a long leader which slides. So the tippet slides up and down the leader, and the back fly is independent of the first fly. So that these two flies, based off their material, won't sink very deep. So in the current, and then in lakes, they'll kind of wander around. And it's kind of like, I'm still working on the umbrella rig, where I can get like six of them going. But currently, I'm only on the two. But anyway, it is actually called the donkey rig. And it is interesting if I do it. Two years ago, I got I tied a smallmouth bait here. Um, if I run this one and that one, it's interesting how many big fish actually eat this little bait. So uh, we'll start tying this no hair day fly real quick. So on that donkey rig, yep. John, are you fishing two different size flies or the same size flies? Um, you can run whatever. Usually what I'll do is I'll have the little fly up at the top and then I'll have, so this is in my mind, two to three. And then I'll run like a four to five inch pattern below that or a three to four inch pattern. And the lower one, what I'll normally do is I'll run just like a little bit of bead chain. I tied that fly, if people go back in your guys' files, I forget what we called it, but the Hammerhead series or something, I've tied that one a lot. Um, but that seems to work real well with it. You have to run a swivel, two swivels on the rig, and you'll see that it'll sink lower. I also run that a lot on an intermediate line. Uh, it does work on a floating line, but it seems like an intermediate fish is better. A sink tip, I don't like it as much because it's just pulling those flies just too deep. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of times, like I was trying to say, is that our our lakes are really clear. So I tend to run this size the most. And then our rivers, by the time I show up after trout season and I'm fishing that warm water for smallmouth bass, I find that the big presentations, like the game changers and the big stuff, they're just not responsive to it. So smaller baits for me are kind of what I, I do a lot in the July and August time. So Perfect. You good, Matt? Let's do it. All right, let's roll. So we're just going to start with a little thread base. We're going to work our way to the back here. So thread for me is I'm not ever too worried about color or, you know, what it is so but so we're going to take some bucktail and we're just going to give it like a stiffening agent in the back to hold the craft fur so we're just going to find a real small clump off the bucktail try to be nice to the brian shop it's so clean here at the northern angler try to keep this all on the table you can make a mess john so, don't worry about it so we're pulling out the under fur and just going to have just a little bit of a stiffing agent in it to hold that craft fur. So I kind of hold it up to the hook eye and I'm looking like, you know, two lengths of the hook shank. Come back, do a little pinch and pull and come back and just kind of wrap that tight so it's pretty simple. I 
All right, <clears throat> found out some bad news the other day that my favorite color craft fur is really hard to get. So anyway, we'll have to come up with a special dye for white. So uh, the olive gray is one of my favorites. I tie this fly in that olive gray with pink and then chartreuse and white works well as well. So craft fur is notorious for having a ton of under fur in the top part after you pull it. So I just kind of like use my fingers and you can see that and then you can kind of see how it kind of splays. And that's really hard to tie. So if you just take it and you kind of like twist it a little bit, you get an easier tie in point. And then if you want to lick it, it makes it even simpler. So, all right. So what we're doing now is just getting our tail set up. All right, the lateral scale opal 169th. You can't go wrong with this stuff. So I'm only looking for two strands here. Yeah, sometimes with that flash, less is more, right? Yes. Yeah, and then we're, again, we're just trying to like imitate something small. What hook so, are you tying this on, John? Uh, there's two hooks that I like for this. Um, if you go back in other videos, that I'm kind of a little bit shy of the B10S, but the B10S for smallmouth works real well. Um, how they eat the fly, I think it works. I'm a little scared on the trout program with that particular pattern. The one in the vise right now is the A-Rex, the uh, light stinger, mm -hmm. the N or something, whatever the code is. I have it in my bag right there. If you, uh, if you look up light stinger, you can find it. Okay. You don't have to know the number codes. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, so yeah. it's the light stinger. The it's light basically stinger. the the same hook for me, the B10S in this one. So um, I just, I'm looking for just a little bit bigger gap on it. Shank length, like however they measure it. Again, I'm not as smart as some of the other tires out there in understanding how it all sets up, but I like a, a little bit longer shank with a wide gap for this. Uh, seems like how smallmouth pull that bait in that you get a really good hookup range on that so and has a nice thin diameter for a quick hook set yep yep so those are all things kind of i don't know what pattern we're in right now with low clear water but we've definitely had it for a while that um i fished bass this past summer with the lowest water i ever have seen kind of where i roll and it definitely made me change a lot of my flies and I've run this fly for a lot of years, but it was interesting, like, even on this fly, how sparse I had to tie it to get the bait fish bite. Uh, crayfish bite was definitely predominant throughout the summer months, just based on where the bass were sitting and how they were feeding. So coming to the river, like, we all love to tie, like, the big stuff, you know, well, or yeah, the changers. And, yeah, yeah, stuff that just wiggles, but... You know, those fish this past year were just going to run from it. So right now, like, we haven't seen sun in 23 days or something. We don't have it's, any snowpack. Yeah. We haven't seen sun. So yep. I'd say we're going to have another low, clear yep. water year based yep. on what we're seeing so far this winter. Yeah, so, you know, if you're a streamer fisherman and you love trout fishing, you're going to hit those high water periods. And if you still love streamer fishing, then you probably are going to have to go to the lake environments or some of the tail waters where we're going to get the migratory bass and you know that's where you know this fly in my head's like okay what what should we be thinking about right now and you know so anyway we'll keep on rolling so anyway with this stuff i just like to come in here and i'll kind of take it and i'll i'm only using two but i'll strand it out so it's a little bit different bring it over the top pinch latch it down and then I'll fold it over. And then I try to make it just a little bit different. I'll push back on the flash and then kind of hit it in two, two different spots. Next step for me, like, could be totally optional. You know, so we're gonna fill in this gap here. You could honestly leave it blank. You could go on to step three, but brought just a, a light kind of body wrapping 
This is the Palmer Chenille. We're gonna use like just a, a medium tan. You could also use like an olive. And again, this is just a filler. So this doesn't really do much because it's all gonna be covered up. So we're just gonna give it, you know, two or three, five, six, niner wraps forward. Our main body. Now we're going to take a little bit more of the craft fur again. You guys are going to have to come up with some sort of fun comment because I forgot one thing that's in my box. So I'm going to have to leave camera here in a second. Oh, we can definitely do that. All right. We're great at ad living. So that Palmer Chenille, is that the, what size is that? Medium? Yes. Okay. Yep. Medium tan. Perfect. So I have a little clump, looks like I'm a little bit sparse, so I'm going to just get a little bit more. Again, we just want to pull out all that under fur. I wonder why they don't have craft fur dubbing yet. You know, it would be a great thing, especially <laughs> for like steelhead nymphs. There you go. What's a nymph? <laughs> I know you're Mr. Egg. <laughs> two two presentations. Streamer, cake fly. Alright, so now what we're gonna do is this could be easy to go longer than your tail. So you're just trying to get your space here. So I want to be a little bit shorter than my tail when I fold it back over. So I'm gonna trim off that little extra, make that a nice smooth cut. I want a little bit to go underneath the fly, so I'm just going to come in, kind of like round the hook eye, take two wraps, pull it tight, and I'm just going to pull that back a little bit. All right, I'll be right back. Thanks, Brian. That was fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> going mobile. <laughs> I like the fly on the wall cam there, Matt. It looks uh, really cool. All right, I'm back. Let's do this. All right. All right, so I have no idea what this material is. So randomly, wintertime, many moons ago, you were sitting there on the internets, and it's kind of like a longer ice dub. So you could use, like, I know silver, copper. What's another in the ice dub family? There's ones that just have really long strands. So what I'm trying to do is add a little bit of flash in with my uh, craft fur. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a wing that will be buried inside. And then there is something really fishy about this little creepy crawly ice tub that I like in there as well. It almost looks like that wing and flash material there you that go. you just tied in. I'm sure there's another one. So mine came from an embroidery company. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we have all our stuff in there. I'm going to pull this apart. Lay it back. This is where you have that bad hair day. Use my thumb that I had to trim because Matt said you had to have nice hands today. It looks good, Johnny. You did a nice, nice job. Pull it in there, make a little bullet, come in front of it all, and kind of wrap, ramp up. And then just so we don't lose it, a little whip finish. And it's interesting with this, like, I've gone in here, added eyes, done other things to it to make it even more lifelike, and it really hasn't caught me any more fish so if you followed any of the other videos and what I talk about and we'll we can talk about it again and if someone has questions and my thoughts on it but you know if you come in here to the northern angler and you go up to that Euro nymph box 
and you look at all those nymphs, almost two thirds of them have a hot spot. And I'm the same way with my streamers, a lot of them. They're, they're the ones that I want are gonna have something bright somewhere in it. And then if I want it completely dull or dead, it's got nothing. So this fly for me, if I just put like just a little bit of pink in there, it seems to work. Maybe it like it catches my eye in the water, but for whatever reason, bass really like it. So I just kind of pinch two sides, come up, pull it back, wrap it forward, pull, use my whip finish tool that I was born with. And we're done. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Just, you know, bad hair day, basically, just on a size six streamer. I like to run, it can be two of these together and how they'll just kind of bounce in the current. Um, you can run it as a smolt on a river like a really good small river like the Pier Marquette. Uh, this fly would work there. Smallmouth bass with all the emerald shiners that we have. Uh, very common bait fish in all our rivers. It works for that. Uh, you could tie it more on the yellow side, run it in the Houghton pile for the darters that we have there. You can do kind of whatever you want with it. So I think this would be a great drop back swing fly. Yeah. For steelies. Yep. So what what we did here in tonight's tie-in for anybody that's still here is this you had to do something smallmouth because it's just been too blah right so that whole wing that i did there i brought that into the next fly which is a swing fly that i use that we've now called doctor's orders Ooh. and we're going to expand basically the same fly in this year with low clear water like one of the secrets to fishing this year was like understanding the little tiny little holes that you had. So if you bass fish this this river the past year, you kind of knew where you could swing a fly into a small spot and maybe there was one. So after we had the big push in October, November got a little bit thinner and you had to search into spots that you might not have fished before. So anyway, that's round two. So Fantastic. So do you tie this in any other sizes? Um, yeah. Yeah. So like for, I've taken this all the way, like, uh, I don't really think always hook, Brian, but I'll think like size. Right. Right. So, and then I'll just get my hook to be right. But instead of using like ice dub to finish off my head, like one of my favorite brushes is the EP minnow brush. Mm -hmm. So that expands it out to give me kind of like that four to six inch bait. Same steps, bucktail, craft fur, flash. And then just giving yourself a little bit stiffer agent in the front so that it that pushes that water and that fly reacts to it. I think I'm going to tie up some of these tomorrow for um, my saltwater trip. I there think this would be a great little uh, bait fish for saltwater as well. Great foundation fly, John. Yeah. How far, when you're running tandem, how far apart do you usually run them? Yeah, so the whole setup for me, like let's say we're running off like a floating line or an intermediate. So I'm going to take kind of my first piece of mono and I'm six three. So I'm gonna stretch my arms out as far as I can and that's kind of like my first piece. That's from fly line to tip. And then I'm gonna take half of that and then cut it. And that's gonna be my main line where my independent fly is gonna travel. And I'll tie, I'll put a swivel onto that main line. So it's just sliding. I'll tie a swivel at the end and then I'll tie that other piece that I cut in half and it'll go off to my back fly. So three feet, the flies will be apart, six foot long leader. And then the first fly will travel on a piece a little bit shorter. So, so eight I'll, inches? Yeah, I'll inches? just make like one where I could tie two or three changes if I want. So it's interesting to me and um, thought about this like today it was funny, like how this is our first date. And, you know, like when you go on a date and you're just like, man, I should have stuff to ask. You know, I should have questions. <laughs> right. Because you can't just talk about yourself because she's not going to be interested. So the one of the thoughts was that, and I was curious how Brian would think about it. So I've talked year three a lot about like hot spotting. And I hot spot a lot for steelhead, smallmouth, musky, pike, all that. But I don't hot spot a lot for brown trout. Right. 
So what's interesting for me when I go bass fishing is that it's almost like bead fishing for me, is that certain beads work on certain conditions. Sure. Right? So pink is like one of my favorites to go to for bass. But if that's not firing, I'm usually like white and chartreuse. Right. Right? So I'm like searching for that. So that first fly, which is smaller, is usually by the time I get out there in August and July in my river program, it's low and clear. So it's like, what do they see? How do they see it? So I, I want to change that one a little bit. So I'll give myself the ability to chew it up a little bit and then cut it. All right. Draw back to the donkey rig. You put your favorite fly on the back end and somebody like, give me a fly that you just love and it gets deep and it gets hooked on something, you're, you're never getting it both. back. <laughs> you can probably reach down and get the first one. You know that little rod tip trick that you go and you wiggle around up, down in there and you break your Scott rod? Well, you can't reach that fly because the first fly stops it. So that's the thing that you have to think of is like, I'm running this in very visual water where I can see stuff and I'm not trying to get deep. I will say, I'm gonna need help on the sideliner. What's the Kelly Gallup fly? Flatliner. Flatliner. I believe. If you take that fly in the front and you run a lamprey in the back and you go trout fishing in the hatch time of the lamprey, that works really well. So keeping that first fluttery fly, because have you ever tied a tandem rig to a fly that it w swims so good independently and then you tail hook it and it's just like, boop. Right. It doesn't deadens. do anything. Right. So this was taking the donkey rig, and I'm like, ooh, I got the sideliner. What is it called? Flatliner. There Flatliner. you go. I'll just cue you in. Flatliner. I'm here for it. <laughs> you do that. It's independent. And then you run, like, some, like, conehead jigging rabbit strip. You're good. So, you know, I, I like the, the idea with the predator fish with the, um, you know, bigger fish chasing the smaller one right you know the whole umbrella rig i get that mm -hmm. i've i've found you know for years of running tandem rigs for trout um you know a lot of times i'll run two different colors two different patterns but usually i'm running the big fly first followed by and sometimes it's micro mm -hmm. like it's a tiny because i feel like once those trout they're not as aggressive as let's say a smallmouth or a pike or a muskie or something like that that they'll move to the big fly and they're like oh i'm fooled i'm busted and they as they turn back they see that small fly and they're like well i've already moved i'm gonna eat this because they don't see that as often do you find that do, do you run it that way at all i always run it the other way do you so okay. like so the cast right it's whoosh, whoosh, goes out there and if you hit your cast the first fly they're gonna see is the rear right right so, and then it's interesting to me to watch these fish pass the, the first one they see and come get the next one. So casting wise, two flies of the same weight always cast a dream. Right. If you go weight in the rear, you better have a lot of open space. It casts terrible. Right. That's why I've always gone with the small yep. fly in the back. Yeah. That's you an know, easy cast. It's easy. Yep. That one's just going to be like, no big deal. You can go where you want. You can roll cast it. You can do whatever you want. If you go the other way, it better be name the biggest section, whatever. <laughs> better, right. not, better not be a tree anywhere close to it. Sure. So anyway, but those are the two, you know, and I don't think, like, I'll go back, rewind, b -b 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 throw the red flag, whatever you want to say, is that I probably don't ever paint myself in the corner that I want to run it the one way, like I said, because it is conditions. Like, sure. what are the fish doing? Do I flip them back? But it has been funny to run this donkey rig and watch them pass the bigger fly in the back and come up and get the little one, which is not as heavy, usually doesn't sink as far. It's up in the column because it's on the slider. I wonder if it's a competition thing. Right? Well, yeah, I think it's... You know, it's you like, know. oh, well, that fish is going to eat yeah. that bait fish. I should eat that first. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, something, you know. I like Let's I like make it more complicated. So. Do we have any questions that we want to address from uh, our viewers? Uh, we did a have a question. I, I'm going to always edit people's questions. Apologies. Um, but, John, why do you stick with craft fur instead of tying an all bucktail, almost the hollow style? 
fly that we'd see from Popovic or, you know, whoever else is doing it today. Is it more no. movement? Is no. it I, more a little bit more depth? I, you, you, you get custom to, you know, how, like when you're sitting in the middle and you're watching it come back, right? You're just like, oh, that looks good. Right, so like Crawford to me always has that movement within it. So if I went bucktail for the majority of it, I know I'm having a different profile. It doesn't matter like how much I probably pinch down and go back. So if I wanted something wider, I'd probably do like a feather and a bucktail, you know. So durability wise, they're probably the same. You know, it's probably just like my preference, like looking around on the river as I'm fishing and looking what is the primary bait fish. So the other thing is like we've veered off into a little bit of a trout talk. So, but like this was positioned as a smallmouth fly and the bait that I see is pretty thin and all the viewers that are still tuned in right now on the 25th of this month, the bait fish guy is coming and you need to tune in, Kevin Feenstra, he would tell me what that bait fish is. Like, Kevin's the equivalent of understanding bait fish. Like, Ed McCoy helps me understand what that brown bug in the sky is. You know, I'm more sure. about, like, the shape of it. Like, what's its name or Latin term? I'm Trout sorry. don't speak Latin. No, no. Last time I checked. Yep, so the, the, the part that I have to get better at is improving my storytelling and telling people what it is but more i'm like it's about this big and brown you know or this big and shiny so hey and it works right i yeah. agree with you on craft fur it has it's just a sexier sexier material than than bucktail well for me i think it's i mean this is a small mouth fly and in my experience a key element of the small mouth eat is when you stall a fly and you still have a little bit of movement, whether it be you want to have marabou, rabbit, or something like craft fur, which, you know, is easy to find for the most part, <laughs> you know, <laughs> consistent. And then if you're doing a full bucktail fly, I, I see that as a much more active retrieve fly than the strip, strip, kill it yeah. kind of thing. And it's funny because, like, now you have me thinking, like, through my box, right? And my big baits are bucktail or, like deer hair heads that push with you know feathers out of the back and two hooks in the big stuff you know so which for me the big baits are you know like we've had really quick steelhead runs you know and then you're sitting there in april and it's 40 degrees and trout aren't going to probably bite on that cold front so you go find the warmest water you can and there's a lot of bass coming in on their pr migration so then you come out and the water's stained and dirty from the spring run. So you have to get their attention. So you're running, you know, two hook bucktail flies that you tied up for pike trips, you know, and the bass are crushing them, you know. So, but again, this one circled back to like the donkey rig was something, you know, back on our first date. Like, okay, how can I impress my audience? That's like, impressive. Something new. So, so. are you using the, the, Tell us about the line that you're using for this a little bit more in detail. Yeah, so the there's three lines I pretty much run for bass. You know, the tight and long, which this can be, like, we had to throw a lot more floating lines this year on our bass streams than we had because the water was so low. The next one that I like to run is the intermediate. Um, I run that. Now, you could take this into four lines, but the intermediate itself, like a clear tip intermediate, is really nice to cast. You can either go down the saltwater one or the freshwater one. I think both fish fine. Just depends on like, if it's 90 degrees, yeah, that saltwater one's gonna outperform the gunky, you know, cold water line. Uh, they have a I-23, which is one of my best, like, if I have a bait that's buoyant, I like to run that one because it doesn't pull me all the way down to the bottom. Uh, the least, line that i run out of any of them is a sink tip and it's just more my style well you can't really pause the fly yeah and it just sinks too fast yep. so for me as well like there there comes a time when you we're very blessed to steelhead fish for six months 
I like to fish as much visual as I possibly can for the other six months of the season. So I will force feed floating lines, intermediates, and anything up. And you know, and like trout, I can't get away with it so much on the trout thing. But I will like all my bass, all my pike, all my musky stuff. I love it if they're in the top top column. So, but I'm not stubborn. You know, like I'll, I'll go deep if I have to. Sure, I think we all. I'd rather see the eth and try and go down deep, and then and you run that risk of towards the end of the day, everybody's gets lazy and you lose a bunch of flies. Mm-hmm. And then you're like frustrated, and they're frustrated because they yeah. feel badly. And then when you're tying the donkey rig, right, you're losing basically two. at least one or yeah. two yeah. at a time. Yep. What are you running for your your leader setup on that donkey rig? Pound like you know. So the the long fluoro? the first piece that I run is usually routed around ten pound fluoro. Okay. And then I'll tip to something lighter on the little fly. Like I'll either go eight. This year I even saw like run a lot of seven pound mm-hmm. for steelhead, and I was running that for bass. Um, it was just funny to me like how finicky they'll get with that clear water. And, you know, it's kind of corresponding to a lot of the lakes that I'm trying to learn for smallmouth right now is that you have to, you know, they're pressured. All the fish that I think that we're seeing right now are heavily pressured. Sure. So, you know, having something, you know, that they can't see definitely helps. Yeah, that's now on your lake type situation, are you running the same thing donkey rig? I like the donkey rig, especially in, like, if it's 10 foot of water, that first break that they're up in, any of that shallow stuff by docks, that rig works really good. Um, And you can still tip that whole setup with some sort of, like, weighted fly. You could put, you know, know, a a light clouser or a conehead crayfish something on the back end. Um, I will drag a crayfish with the donkey rig as well, so Mm -hmm. I'll still have this buoyant fly kind of up in the top part and it actually acts like a strike indicator so as it's flowing through there you see the little minnow doing some things and then the crayfish is just kind of working its way a little bit past your depth because it's six feet underneath the fly line so you know it that works real well okay um so are you waiting that crayfish fly then yeah so you'd have it you know either tied on a dumbbell eye system or a conehead system you know so all the crayfish you know for me you know at least the ones you know same thing if i'm running this fly and a crayfish my crayfish aren't going to be very big you know they're going to be smaller than baby lobsters sure you know they're going to be just you know the single two to three which you know same thing like when you're floating around and you're looking around what's the thing that you see the most i mean the the best compliment I can give to Ed McCoy that he taught me to do is like, you need to observe, you need to see what's around you, you know, and it doesn't change if you're trout fishing or smallmouth fishing. Like, what do you see when you catch a bass and it's puking things up? What is it puking up? Um, If you're floating around and you see crayfish just scurrying everywhere and they won't chase your no hair day or your hair day fly, maybe you should change to a crayfish. Sure. You know, so it's just observing what all these fish are eating. You I know. always look for that full moon molt. Yeah. You know, when the crayfish molt and they oh, get yeah. soft and yeah. that's just deadly. Yeah. No, that's you definitely definitely need to understand that behavior. No different than understanding your bugs when they hatch. You know, and it is something that, you know, I wasn't ever sure it's cool to hear you say it because it's like, is it the full moon? Is that when the crayfish are at most at their soft edge or is that a wives tale? You know, because you're always second guessing yourself. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. But. I guess I just need to read more and watch more YouTube videos, I guess. I mean, that's been something. my observation through the years, yeah. you know, like, oh, you know, oh, that's when they're the softest yep. and, yep. you know, that's when they're most susceptible mm-hmm. and that lighter colored buff always seems to work yep. versus you know, like the bolder oranges or browns. Yeah. No, and when you're, you know, putting the boat in at Houghton Pile and you see all the like them skirt, like carcasses yes. of them out that boat ramp and you're like, well, maybe I should pay attention to this, you know? So maybe that's why they're not eating my stonefly right now. So. <laughs> you have to feed the fish what they want, yes. right? Yes, yes. No matter what species. Yep. Well, fantastic. Mm-hmm. What do we have up next? Oh, we're going to do a little swing fly. So give me two seconds and I'll throw some material up here.
So we do have, um, I think, a, a loon giveaway tonight, right? Yeah, we should... Sorry, I'm going to turn my mic back on as I'm running around hitting buttons. Yeah, we do have a... Yeah, are we giving away a... Is that what we're giving away? We're giving away the UV fly tying kit. Dang, that's that's pretty cool. So you get uh, a bottle of flow thin and thick and the UV loon bench light, which is kind of the standard out there. Um, that's a pretty cool pretty cool giveaway there. So right, we thanks, just have Sean, to figure out how to do it. Thanks, no loon. problem. Thank you, loon. Yeah. Yeah, big thanks to loon for, for kicking in there. Uh, John, you're on their... Pro staff, is that right? Yeah, is that one of the ambassadors for ambassadors. for them. So they came out with a series of new tools this year, and I will have to say that they'd, you have to help me with the name, but the trigger release Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, the quick release. Yeah. yeah, so when I was in Alaska, they run a tool for, uh, we went out there with Jeff Top at Angler's Alibi, a little shout out to John Perry and his lodge. Um, they run a really cool tool for releasing trout really quick. So it got me thinking because it was the the small one. Yeah, the bigger one. The big one? The one in his left hand. Ah. So anyway, it got me thinking about like using the tool because I was always just approaching that tool like the muskie and the pike release. Right. You know, getting your fly out there. So on the swing bite this year and on the bead program, that tool that you're holding, Brian, is awesome it is for actually, steelhead release? yeah it's actually pretty impressive and it's definitely one of those tools that you break out and everybody's watching and if you take i don't have leader here but the tool grabs the hook and then you take the leader and you put it in a 90 degree so you just push on the other one and you pull the trigger and it pops out every time wow so carrying a four sap you know i carry the pliers on me all the time and doesn't quite always work, doesn't quite always work. And I started carrying this tool on the side of the boat. Fish would be in the net, grab the leader, pull it, pop, pull it, pop. Nice. And it has been something that, you know, has made, if you're big into keep them wet theory, that sure. you can just pop and go. In the more fisher. and more of my clients are so. like, I have enough steelhead pictures. Yep. Let's just keep this yep. in the water and yep. let it go. Yeah. I use this tool. Okay quite a bit by loon um for like releasing fish you know because you can you can face them upstream if you've played them out you know if you're gonna try and take a picture or whatever um this is a great little release tool and i i love that by loon as well cool. uh why john's tying will come up with a way to give away this loon uv tying kit how about that yeah there you go Ooh. we'll come up with something we'll come up with the rig All right, so how this one basically came about is that this year, the November program on the swing bite for me personally was a little bit tough. And if you know anything, I think we talked about this last year, Matt, and I have a tendency not to be able to sleep in too late. So I tend to tie in the morning and you're watching your guys cast and you're tying. I tie off a template and same one we tied off last year and I started looking at the template and I was like, I am goby heavy. Like I'm ice dub heavy in the front. I'm tail in the back. And like every single one looks like a goby. Every, like every fly I'm throwing looks like a goby. And you're motivated by your peers and Kevin Feenstra has the code breaker and you're sitting there and you're tying his code breaker and you're running it and you're seeing it swing through the water. And it's great. It's a great fly. And you're not, trying to be any different really you're just trying to like go out and hunt a fish but you're like what else could i add to it how can i change the the template just a little bit and i will see that a lot of my casters have a hard time turning the rabbit over sure and so this is a fly that has worked for me this fall that is hackle based and i was worried about hackle breaking apart and you know the the hackles that we have to buy from whiting are not cheap. Right. And so I have just a belief why I run the feathers a certain way and how they are protected. And then I use a little bit of loon stuff on them. And I haven't lost a feather yet. 
So nice. I'm not saying I won't, but it's just something that I have a little bit of a different fly. So this fly has worked on the Betsy for me and it's worked on the lower man. And I have no doubt from a fly that I tied last year for you guys that it's almost like that a fly evolved into this one. Sure. So, uh, I pre-tied um, the setup that I like to use because we saw it last year in the same fly, uh, but we're gonna run off the B chain, which I like to weight all my flies some way basically for steelhead i'm either going to do b chain or dumbbell eyes uh cone heads something's going to be weighted somewhere uh i went through a little period of time this year where my hook wasn't working and i'd have the fish on and we'd be running away and my fish would come off and i was like all right that fly, that hook's gone so it's so what have you switched up to hook so flies? right now we're on to the <laughs> gamagatsu finesse y gap that's so, good hook. and i am not uh i'll run like bead rigs with red hooks i'll run i'm not thinking red does anything so anyway i just have a red hook that's because what i got and it works great so hmm. anyway and this is on a shank with um... <laughs> yeah this is on john shank called a cotter pin okay so you're running on a cotter yeah, pin with... i run Run off a cotter pin. So the first step for me is that thirty pound. What is that? Oh yours? yeah. The, so what I do on my rigs, you guys get a couple more views, and you can see last year's video as well. But I'll take forty pound braid, I'll get it through the eye, and I'll double it. So I have four strands of braid, and I'll run my hook so off the braid, and I'll put it onto the cotter pin so it runs this way. And why I run it that way is I'm hoping that the four pound or four strands of braid hold it over one log, just one cast. <laughs> right, so you can, can I, slide it Can off I of get there? it through that one spot? You know, will I get lucky once? So anyway, that's kind of why I run it, hook up. Um, and that's why I weight the front so that this is pulling that and it doesn't rotate the fly over. So, right. so anyway, that's kind of, probably none of it really matters, but you have to believe in something, Santa Claus or whatever. So we're gonna take a little bit of this ripple ice and we're gonna put it back here in the back and we're kinda gonna put it on both sides so it kinda flares out. Break open our nice whiting hackle here. And I've tied this in olive and then uh, Grizzly. So is that a UV ripple ice, Johnny? Uh, this one is the blue. Nice. So blue UV. Okay. So I'm interested about that because we should hit. We should hit that fly. Yeah. Doesn't do nothing. I don't know why they put that on there. They must think it means something. So on the the saddle hackle, what I'm actually looking for is a pretty short feather. So if I was going to tie a bunch of these, what I'll I kind of look at the feathers as columns. So I get into column two first and I pull off two of the feathers and I'll just kind of put them to the side. Then I'll go back to column one and I'm looking for two and I'll put those off to the side. So I have four total feathers in what I'm now going to do is take one of the long feathers and one of the short feathers and I'm going to put the long feather in the back and the short feather in the front. Matt, am I doing okay with my hands there? Sorry, I'm multitasking. You're like, doing so good. I'm trying to get a form going here. Okay. So anyway, if you didn't see that, I'm sorry, but... It was good. Okay. Then what I'm going to look for is I'm going to come back here with this feather. I got this hook is my length gauge. I'm going to go slightly longer than the hook. Then what I like to do next is I take care of this fluff. So I pinch and I pull off the fluff, giving myself some bare stems. Come back, kind of check my length a little bit, a little bit long. Pull that back. Use my thumb, a couple loose wraps, pull those two stems in. I'm 
and lock that down. Nice. Nice and, nice and straight. All right. Kind of back to that, like, first date thing. It's like, oh, man. I can like, see how this would be much easier to turn over than Rabbit. Oh, Rabbit is, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's great in the water. It just doesn't cast very well. And it's it's interesting, like, you just have some lines or some casters that, I don't know if it's just the bottom hand or they're too, too top heavy, but it just doesn't flip over. Sure. So it's like, all right, we got to come up with something different and I've just not fallen in love with Marabou recently. So I'm just trying to find something else in the, the rear. So It's been hard to find good Marabou, yeah. honestly. Yep. So same thing here. And this fly is definitely one that, you know, if I don't get the feathers right and they're like turning on me, I'm not the best of tires so it's like I do have to work at this one a little bit we're good there I'll just bring this thread back all right let's clean this up just a little bit all right now we're gonna grab some of the flow I'm gonna come in here right the base and just kind of hit the kind of the stems. Use our finger and kind of rub that in there. And this is going to stiffen up that little point. And then also like give us just a little bit of durability, but not hurt the the flutter. Don't look into the blue light. <laughs> don't do it. Don't follow the light. Don't do it. All right. It almost looks like the wood perch that we have in the big man's. Oh yeah, this little the trout perch, wood perch, <laughs> potent pile section. All right. One of the best flashes for me, like on low conditions or clear water, is silver. Same thing, like uh, learn that technique from watching YouTube videos on bass fishing that the guys that run certain baits in clear water silver is definitely one of the first ones that are going to pick on of its reflective property so it's not going to set out as much light so we're going to take I don't know eight strands come in here take it to the top pinch it down Get our length just past like the length of our hook. Come in here and just do like a little scissor cut. All right, just like on the previous fly, I'm unsold. Do I fill or do I not fill? So I brought a filler. You, I, I think you could skip that step. Any filler that will work. So this is Palmer chenille again? Yep, little Palmer chenille. This one's in rainbow. Three wraps. like a wing over the top. It's going to be craft fur. I'm going to do a pretty big little honk here. Same thing, we're going to come in. Make a mess. Make some dubbing. Spin, some craft spin it dubbing. to control it. And wet it down. All right, lengthwise, same thing. You're probably not going to use the whole piece. I'm going to try to come back just outside the length of your flash in there. Find your scissors. We're going to 
lay it down and keep it forward. All right, we have that. What would you say this stuff is, Brian? I'd say it's like wing and flash. Okay, wing and flash. Ice wing. Ice there wing. you go. Yep. Ice wing is still a, a current oh. material. Yeah. I think wing and flash was like, I don't know. You don't see it a whole lot anymore. But Just looking for, it's like an ice dub that's just longer. It's longer fibers. Yeah. Putting that in there. Again, going off the silver template. Who makes that rainbow Palmer chenille? John, I don't have that on my desk. I know. Sorry. <laughs> John throws all of his packages away. <laughs> like, takes the labels <laughs> off. He may, he throws them away in the shop and then just walks out, I think. so. I was like, oh, do I bring a filler? Do I not bring a filler? I like filler. So, anyway, we're going to use some more of that ripple ice. I'm going to add that in there. All right. So then we're going to pull this back. over the top and this time like on that little craft for minnow I was running just in front of it and it kind of like gave it a shape right so it gave it a little bit of profile and then the water will go down on this one what I found is that if I come in just before where I pull it over and then pull it tight it's almost like a little bullet there and that's going to give me a little ridge for my next step so we have this over the top I come in front of it, and just so I don't lose that little bump there, I'm going to half hitch it. All right. This has way too many steps for a guide fly, John. Is okay. that why it's called Doctor's Orders? Yes, it is actually. <laughs> uh, no, it's, we can get into that how it came about on the name, but it was more, I think you're looking at the first one I tied, and you're like, all right, got to show a little bit of effort here and come out with some <laughs> steps. You know, maybe we'll get a couple of views, but it is actually one that I have been tying. So, all right, so I have a little bit of like honesty here. The brush I'm going to use is my favorite and it will work. The one I recently just got is different now and it's not the same. So, I don't have a replacement material. But if you find shrimp pink, ice stub, shrimp pink, am I right, Matt? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Shrimp Sorry. pink will give me the same color pink that I'm looking for. UV Shrimp pink. is a, a great mix of, it has a tinge of orange to it. Yes. Whereas if you go shell, yep. it's much more light pink. Yep. It looked like you were using either shell or hot. actually hot I pink. I was hot on the last one yes. and then UV is lighter and chopped up yep. a lot more. Yep. It's so this one gives lives, me yeah. this pink was like, ooh, it's not quite as burning. All right. But the other one, the new one is nothing. I get no no love on the on the hot spot. So anyway, you have to be careful. And I found the same problem last year when I run into Senyo's some sort of orange. Package A, oh man, this is awesome. Package B, the next time, this is not the same. <laughs> Man. So, but you have to, I guess if you find something, just buy all they got. So anyway, this is the Sparkle Brush. Sparkle Minnow Body Brush yes. from MFC. And pink, which if you've tied any of the trout, I know Matt did the Sparkle Minnow, right, Matt? That's correct, there yeah. You go. Great little fly. So we're going to get rid of that little thing. And I just do three turns of this hot pink. And when you Ooh. first wrap it, it kind of really like just buries itself into the material. The nice thing about this brush is that the wire is really thin. So you can use your really expensive scissors. Take your little comb. And those fibers will still lock in there, but they come apart now. Oh, that looks good. Right. So we'll add 
glad that that comb comes in handy in the boat when your craft fur flies um, become fouled. Yes. You can straighten them back yes. out. The ergo comb. The ergo comb. Is my favorite one for that, which works good. I wonder if there's a swing fly without a duck feather. All right, donating all bad feathers. You guys are so quiet tonight. Oh, yeah. We're quiet? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We're wow. just so focused on, <laughs> on what's happening up there. It's your, your tie is so captivating, <laughs> Oh, my <Josh>. goodness. <laughs> the endless. <laughs> oh, that looks sexy. We need to find duck hunters to send us. Yeah, it's like Larry. <laughs> yeah, he's down in Arkansas right I now. Know. I just spoke with him. He's like, I think I got bags. <laughs> like, Bring it home. <laughs> Use my whip finish tool. Where do you buy one of those? <laughs> Should talk to my mom. She knows. Yeah. All right. Doctor's orders. I like it. I so, like that a lot. So uh, do you ever tie that on a fixed hook for, like, smallmouth and stuff like that? Or and is just, that you're just yeah, doing, like, this, the swing fly? Well, this was just it. new. Like, it's just kind of evolved. So. We did have a, a question about reverse tie, craft fur versus, you know, your standard tie-in and, and wrap the thread over it. Yep. I think I know the answer, but uh, I'm going to let you you answer that one yeah so i think it just like the the pullover method so there's if i if i'm adding things into the crafter like flashaboo or whatever other materials to give it shimmer inside there i always kind of bend it over so then also as i work my way forward like my last step like if i fold it over i get more mass in the front as well so uh this one was more like a wing but i wanted the flash in there like i wanted to go down the silver template as much as i could and it was just more like you know brian will speak to it like how low and clear we were and i can't tie a fly without flash like i i just have a hard time just fishing no flash it feels weird. It yeah, so feel weird. I'll run down the like some strands of pearl, some strands of silver, and that's where this one like I put the flash inside the feather, and then I put flash inside the craft, and then I'm still when I swam this fly, and it was actually like how much movement I got out of it. Like sitting on the template and sitting at the vise, I wasn't that like thrilled with it, and then I put it in the water, and I was just like, oh. That does, like, it did different than my goby, you know, and that's, like, my goby, for those that might not have tuned in yet, was the rabbit followed by the big chunk of ice dub, you know, and in my head, that's sculpin shape. It's big ice dub with a, a tail in there, and then what I got was a feather, like, doing this more instead of, you know, the, the sculpin thing. Sure. So, but anyway... You can fish this one, and Niederstadt used to talk about, like, pumping the rod. Mm -hmm. I was doing that in jams and stuff, like, trying to get this thing to do little darts. So that was kind of fun to play with. And, you know, the swing bite, I would say, still wasn't anything better, but it was like I had a confidence fly later in the season. And then the template for this is, like, getting rid of the rabbit, getting into a feather, using a couple little products to like secure those stems in there and then matt gergowski taught me like off the musky platform he always adds four because when you lose one yeah then you lose two you still have a bait that works right. and i was like well i'm definitely gonna lose feathers with casting and trees and fish so that's why i i go down the four template sure. 
I like that four template. And I think to summarize that reverse tie thing, it's it's three things. It's one, it's cleanliness. If you've ever if you tie it in standard, you have a lot to clean up. Two, it's such a like you mentioned, it's such a good wedge. It's a great support system. Like it's supporting we'll switch over to the fly. It's supporting that ice dub, it's supporting that mallard, that kick out, and volume. You know, just it maintains volume under tension a little bit more, I think, is the third, mm -hmm. at least how I read it. So, yeah, I like it. I like this fly from the standpoint of the feathers versus rabbit or marabou, right? right? I mean, you could tie it with rabbit or marabou. Oh, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, and I found myself um, this year, like with our low clear water, cutting flash out. You can always cut yeah. flash out. Yep. You know, while you're on the, if you feel like it's too much. Yep. Right? Or the light conditions change, but you still have confidence in that color. But you can't add more flash. No, nope. right? That's so not true. I always, I always approach it that way when it comes to flash. Sure. All right. It's time. If you oh. want to win this thing, uh, I would recommend not entering any comments. Um, and instead, go to the description of the video and put your email in the Google form. It's, uh, it's entitled, win, uh, I don't know. You'll see it. If you miss it, mm. <laughs> more chances for everyone else it's like the third thing down in the description and we'll close that link at midnight because i need to go to bed simple and uh we'll <laughs> draw a, a winner already. tomorrow and we'll announce the winner tomorrow yeah. so awesome. simple uv fly tying kit from loon uh so I'm not really clear cool on that link. How do you, how do you uh you link? click on it for us boomers click on it it's a google form and all you'll have to do is enter your email and you're entered to win simple as that fantastic boom Thanks for getting us hooked up with this. Yeah, January. awesome. Guys. Very Super helpful. Excited. Uh, let's see. Do, do you have any more? Anybody else? Let's see. Uh, we have a few more questions for John here. Have you tied? How do you do you fish many rabbit based um, swing streamers? I, yes. I know you do. Yes. Yeah. Very, very heavy from standard rabbit to the pulsator. Like I mm -hmm. do a lot out of the pulsator rabbit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some really cool colors off there that's another hairline product it's a little bit thinner strip uh last year's video i know again was off the pulsator um but anything from black purple olive they have some really interesting three-tone stuff that you know catches your eye off like the earth tones from the tans and pinks and oranges that they do but yeah a lot of rabbit so all right, and from Nick, who uh, I promised, I, I still ho owe him flies from last year from Russ's. Uh, I saw him hook a fish. I cheered him on yeah. from Bear Creek Boat Launch. Oh, cool. Which Nick? Nick Sage. Oh, nice. That's yeah. a win. Uh, he asks, uh, what do you put more importance on, hook type or hook spacing off the back of the shank? Which is, I think, a fantastic it's a great question. question. You know, is the hook itself more important oh, or where, the distance? Where it's How located. far back? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so the, the relationship of the material to where the hook is is important to me. So the type of hook is probably more a confidence thing. Like I've run off the, I think it was off the owner last year, and I've run that guy for years. And then this year, who knows, you lose you know, it was rough. You lose one fish and it probably doesn't get in your head. You lose two and you're starting to think and then three and four and five and you're like, I'm done. Like, I got to switch. What <laughs> else is there? What else is there? And you're searching and you're looking and you're looking at like gap and you're like, whoa, what's this? And then you put it in there and you bend on it and you're like, will it hold on? So anyway, like, uh -oh. I'm sure this, this hook camera. will cause me problems. So, but... I lose myself. I lost you. No. Oh. I'll push some <laughs> buttons. We'll put okay. you on like super B cam here. All right. One We're on this wall. can. Which one? GoPro. Here in the. Oh. Up on the waiter. Up here. on the waiter. Here can on you, the. Can, uh, the, can the they still the hear me camera. though? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. We can still hear you. So. so it is important for me where the hook is. Uh, the type of hook is probably more confident. So I'd say I'd probably lean to more where the hook is in relationship to the fly. So perfect. Perfect. And I mean, what about you, Brian? You know, I think for me, it's a confidence in the hook. Um, I don't hook nearly as many fish on the swing as you do, Oh my God! but, uh, 
<laughs> We're on that first date I like still. to. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do like to um, have that hook to be somewhat in the body of the fly. Okay. I don't hang it all the way off the end. Sure. Because I just, I don't know. I, I like, if they're going to grab it, like I do, and I don't put it too close because they do tend to come up from behind on the swing, you know, obviously, and hit it that way. So there is a happy medium, um, and I want it to be stiff enough so that my hook rides the correct direction that I want it to be. Sure. So if you make it too long, that I feel like that hook twists. Yep. And I feel like you lose fish because they hit it and it's off to a different angle than what you set up to have that come off your shank. Sure. So. Yeah, that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I approach it. But uh, anyway, we thank you so much, Johnny, for thank you guys. coming out. Like, yeah. um, we have all the material lists that we'll have up. Uh, for this and and we really appreciate you um you know partnering with us and matt like you do a great job with this i can't thank you enough um you know putting all this together it's it's just mind-boggling the little There's studio so setup that we here. have right i know johnny was <laughs> filming videos yesterday uh he and eddie were, were yeah, doing my stuff. one my one little pop-up camera <laughs> so like, anyway, way than the live, like, this is pretty so overwhelming for yeah. me because I'm not super techie, and Matt just has this like magical studio that we set up in the shop. So, a big shout out to Matt and all of his Thank efforts, you, uh, uh, you know, with our website, all these great, uh, thanks to Loon you know, content time. videos, and thanks to Loon for supplying us with prizes for this. And thank you all for tuning in. Um, you know, without you know viewers like you, without people checking this out. Um, fly shops uh, across the nation wouldn't survive. So, uh, you know, we'd appreciate it if you shop small and, uh, you know, shop local, shop with us. You know, that's why we put this stuff together. Um, we want to stay We want to stay open for business for the next 10 years. Amen. So, anyway, we appreciate everybody's business. And uh, I'm sure Matt has some closing comments. I'm about to yeah, I just want to our next clarify for those of you who are, who are still looking for it. If you go to the YouTube page for live fly tang with john ray 2023 click on the uh it should be like a more or show more button that shows the full description of the video right below the viewer and it says enter to win the loon uv tying kit here click on that sucker Perfect. and you should be in business all right that's uh yeah uh, don't worry. I think there will be maybe another thing for Ed, maybe. Or oh, for Loon? Oh, for yeah. Loon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. tune in. You know, another great chance to win something from Loon uh, when we have Ed on. Uh, round three of live fly tying cool. this season. So February 8th. Awesome. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah. Uh, for bearing with us. This was the uh, first one of the seasons. Always a little bit, a little bit entertaining. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. I think, you know, it was, it was Without a hitch. We survived. Everybody can hear us. Everybody can see you. So, all right. All right. Thanks, Get time, everyone. Guys. We'll see you. I'm going to hit one. a button. Are we going to do the fade out with some awesome music? Yeah. I do like the new music.